We continue now. This is Yivamas Da 52b. The Gemara continues the statement of Rami Barcham. Let's say there's a woman, he's not betrothed to her at all, he's not married to her at all, he has no connection. And then he writes her a get that he wants to use after he marries her. So Ain get. So in that case, the get is no good. Because at the time that he wrote the get, he wasn't able to divorce her. He wasn't even, he didn't even have an Arison with her. And therefore, uh, it's not going to be effective. As Rashi says, If he marries her then and divorce her with this get it's no good and since at the time it was written it was not fit to be used for Gerishin and so now the Gemara continues boy Rami Bar so now Rami Bar asks what if a person writes a get for his Yivama so in other words her husband died now she falls to him for Yivam there's a bond between them of Yivam if he writes a get at that point in time is that a good a good kosher get to use and the one hand we can say since there is a connection between them them, it's no different than an Arusa, like a betrothal, and it should be an effective get. Or maybe he'll say no, since he hasn't done a mimer yet with her, he hasn't actually done the Arusin process of the Yibam, so lo, so then the get should not be good, and the Gemara says, take who they leave that as a question. Rashi says, kodem shakansa. He writes the get before he marries her. Then when he marries her, he gives her the get. Is that going to be an effective Gerishin or not? And again, the Gemara says, take who. And the Gemara continues, Boy Rav Hananya, Rav Hananya asks, Kosav get leze koso, velo lama moro. Let's say he writes again and he says he's undoing the bond, but not undoing the mimer. Or the other way, lama moro velo leze koso, the get says that he's undoing the mimer, but not undoing the zeka. So mahu, what is the halacha? Rashi over here says, Kosav get leze koso, velo lama moro, lama moro velo leze koso, vuhu asa ba mimer tchila. Now he does the mimer with her. So Mao Shatifsalola Bekach. So is she going to be possible with this or not? And what that means to say is that again in general, when a person gives a get to the Yavama, so then we say there's Allah of Lo Yivna. So over here in this case, is this going to be enough of a get that it's gonna be a, that it's going to be an issue of Lo Yivna or not? And so the Gemara continues, Maimer Eloi Zeka Karami. On the one end, we could say that the Maimer is built on top of the Zeka, it's on top of the bond. Vahavalek, Megarish Chatzisha, it would be the same as divorcing half a woman. He's saying the, the get is only for the Zeka and not the Maimer, or vice versa. And the Maimer really is built upon the Zeka, so you're only doing half. Vahamegarish Chatzisha, Loasavalo Klum. And the general rule is if you try to divorce a half a woman, that's nothing. Odilmor, maybe. Maybe they're independent and therefore the get is going to be effective. Rashi over here says, Mimer Eloi Zeka Rami, Kishaasa Mimer, Nidbakim Hazeka. When you do a Mimer that connects to the Zeka, Vinitosafal, it adds on to it. Vein get Moel Lozeb, below Zeb, the get's going to be nothing if you're not doing it on both. The Kaman Shanichta Besocha get Shalo Aso El Echon Mehen, since the get itself says it's only on one of them, Havale Megarish Chatsi Isha, that's like Megarish Chatsi Isha, Velo Klumu Mutaris Lo, it's nothing, and she's still mutter to him. And it is effective. So, for example, if he writes the get for the Zeka, not the Maimer, so then we're going to say that she is also Tim and his brothers. The Zeka is now gone because of the get, and there's a din of Lo Yivna. So let's say he writes it for the Maimer, not the Zeka. So in that case, she'll be usher to him, but she'll still be mutter to the brothers. The Maimer because the mimer has been taken away, in that case, actually, the original Zeka bond will still be in place. In other words, if he writes the get only for the mimer, so it's as if there's no mimer at all, there's no connection of mimer between him and the woman, and so now she can do chalitz, she can do, uh, she can do yibam with the other brother because it's just a regular, normal Zeka bond, and she can do, uh, she can do yibam. And so the Gemara says to answer this question, we should answer this question from Rava's statement. The Yama Rava because Rava said, Nasan get He said, in general, if a person gives the get just for the mimer, so hutra tsarasa. So then the co wife actually becomes mutter. As Rashi over here says, Nasan get zekaso. Again, similar to what Rashi just said before, he gives the get for the mimer and not for the bond. So in that case, the mimer is undone, and the co wife, now there's a regular bond again, and the co wife is going to be, it's going to be mutter. And so the Gemara says, No, you're right. According to Rava, it, it is obvious. According to Rava, you give a get for the mimer, that's effective. You can give a get for partial. But to Rav Hanania, this was a question. And my, what is the answer to the question? Teku, the Gemara says, Teku, we leave it as a question.
And Rashi over here explains the case that Rava was referring to. The, this is a case earlier. It says, let's say you have a situation of Gimel Achin, Nesu, and Gimel Nachrios. The case is you have three brothers married to three women. They're not sisters or anything. The case is so one of the brother dies. And the second one does a mimer with his wife. And then he dies. So now you have a situation over here where this woman is kind of falling to Yibam to the third brother from both brothers because she fell from the first brother. And then the second brother started the process and then he died. So so the, the mission over there says you have to do chalitza, because again, it's a problem of two batim, coming from two houses. The Kama Rava, and so then Rava says, Kama Rava Allah. Now Rava says on that, Nasan get l'mamaru. Let's say the second brother, he actually undid his mimer. So he did the mimer, but then he undid it with a get. V'yachar kach and then he dies. So hutra ishto harishona. So now his first wife, not talking about the wife that fell to the second brother, but the second brother's original wife, she's mutter, shehit sara, so that's the co-wife, lo'achev asheni. She's mutter to the second brother, to the the remaining brother, the ilav get havasura la mishum zeka shnei Because again, if not for the get, this would a pro- would be a problem of zeka shnei yavamin. Again, like we said, not two houses, but coming from two separate brothers, that was the problem. Al mahaylechu de kai. So in any in any case, what do you see? You see from that that they're independent, meaning to say the mimer and the zeka are independent, and you can undo the mimer. Midahani get lishtaruye tsarasol achavasheni. Because that's how the get is allowing that the co-wife can marry the other brother. Now, what about her herself? Rashi says. The truth is, she herself is also mutter to the brother. Once the second brother undoes the mimer, so now she came from the first brother that died, and she can also marry the remaining brother. The only reason that he can't marry her is because El de Mechalfa Bebalas get gummer. It's only because we're afraid that it's going to get confused with a case where she really got a genuine full get. Lezeka de Mechame Mimer, like she got a get for the Zeka. Oh, Lezeka U Mimer, let's say she got a get for the Zeka and the Mimer. So we're just afraid that you might get confused with a case where there really is a get gomor, in which case, of course, the brother is not allowed to marry her. That's what it says in Arbo Achen, but the point remains the same. The point is that Rav is saying that when the get is given for the mimer, it does undo the mimer fully. Yes, there might be some source of confusion between this case and a case where there was a full full get, and that was the gomor earlier, but you still see from Rav that when you give a get from a mimer, that does undo the mimer. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, The Mishnah's principle was, once Chalitza is done, anything after the Chalitza is totally ineffective. If you do a Mimer after the Chalitza, it's not going to be anything. And the Gemara says, Amar Rav Yudah Marav, Rav Yudah says in the name of Rav, Zu Divrei Rabbi Akiva. This, uh, this line in the Mishnah follows the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. Rashi pointed this out already on the Mishnah. That the idea is Kiddushin is ineffective once you have Chai Lavin. So in this case, once you do Chalitza, she's the person's Chalitza. That's a Lav to marry her at that point in time. And so you try to do a Mimer already, it's not going to work because Kiddushin doesn't work by Chai Lavin. But Rav continues, but the Chachamim say, things could be effective after, after Chalitza. Because even though she is his Chalitza, but that's only a lav, and Kedushin can be Tofes when there's a situation that's just a lav. And the Gemara continues, but can you really say that the Mishnah follows Rabbi Akiva? But it says earlier in the Mishnah, let's say the person gives a get and does a mimer. So the halach is, so she's going to require a get and she's also going to require chalitza. And the Gemara says, V'i Rabbi Akiva, but one second, if we're following the opinion of Rabbi Akiva, Kevin de Yoav get, once he gave her a get, mi mahani ba maimer. Does the maimer even work? In other words, the reason why she requires a get and chalitza, she requires a get for the maimer that was done, but also she still re- is going to require chalitza because we say there's still a bond that remains. But why does she require a get for the maimer? A maimer should not work after a get, according to Rabbi Akiva. But we learned in a brisa. Rabbi Akiva, Omer Rabbi Akiva says, "Minayin lenosin get liyevemto." How do you know if a person gives a get to his yevamo shenesra olav olamis that she's usher to him forever? Once he gives her a get, she's usher to him. Shenemer, like it says, "Lo yuchal bala harishon asher shilcha." It says the first husband that sent her, uh, so he darshins achar shiluach. He darshins that it means to say after she is sent away, it's going to be a problem. As Rashi over here says, "Achar shiluach kilom ramidach siv asher shilcha kro yiseret lo." That's an extra pasuk that's not needed. So why does it say that? Here's what it means. There's a case where somebody sends her away where he can't remarry her after. Even if she didn't marry someone else in the interim. And what is it talking about? It's talking about a Yavama, meaning if he gives a Yavama get, he can't marry her. 
Vikavan de Balavkai. Now, if we're talking here from a Pasuk of Lo Yuchal Bala Harisha Rasha Shulcha, which is a lav, it's a Pasuk in the Torah. So Hechi Mahani Basu Maimer. So how is Maimer going to work? Because we just said that according to Rabbi Akiva, when you have Chayve Lavin, Kedushan doesn't work. Yet it says in the Mishnah that he gives a get first and then does the Maimer. The Maimer is effective and she's going to require a get for the Maimer. So that line obviously cannot be Rabbi Akiva. And so the Gemara answers, Amar Ravashi, Ravashi says, no, get Yevam in Midrabonon. When the get is given to Yevam, really that's only a halacha Midrabonon, that he can't marry her. Across Machta Bialma, the Pasuk is just a support for this. It really isn't a Chi of Chayve Lavin, and therefore it's no, it's no proof that it's not Rabbi Akiva. That line very well could be Rabbi Akiva. It's just an Isra Drabonon over there, and the Mimer actually would be effective after the get. And the Gemara continues, Tanya Nami Hachi, we have a Brisa that supports this as well. Oma Rebbe, Rebbe says, Ein hadvarim halolu amurim elo ledivrei Rebbe Akiva. This idea that once chalitza is done, nothing can be effective after, that's according to Rebbe Akiva. Shayosa chalutza kerva, because he said a chalutza, which is chayvei lavin, is the same as any situation of erva, and kiddushin is not effective. Avol chachomim omrim, but the chachomim say, yesh achar chalitza, klum chalitza, after chalitza, it could be effective. Va'ani omrim, now Rebbe says, I myself say, Amos, I, when is it effective? Bizman shekitcha l'shum ishas. That's only if he marries her. L'shum ishas, meaning he says that he's doing it as a regular marriage. If he, if he does it as a regular marriage after chalitza, that's effective. Avol kitcha l'shum yavmos. But let's say he does the kiddush and he says, I'm doing this as an act of yibum. So then, ein achar chalitza klum. Then already, once chalitza is done, to do a kiddush as an act of yibum after chalitza, that's going to be totally ineffective. And the Gemara continues, Tanya Idech, we have another b'risa that says, Hacholitz li'evemto, let's say somebody does chalitza, v'chazar v'kitcha, and then he does kiddushin. Rabbi Yomer, Rabbi says, im kitcha l'shomisha, so if he does it as like a regular kiddushin of marriage, so tzricha he menu get, so then she needs a get, meaning that's an effective kiddushin. But l'shom yav must, but if he does it for the sake of yibam, after he's already done chalitza, ain tzricha he menu get, she doesn't even need a get, that kiddushin is totally ineffective. The chachamim omrim and the chachamim say, bein shekitcha l'shomishas, bein shekitcha l'shom yavmos. It doesn't matter what the intention was, whether it's a kedushin for ishas or yavmos. Tzricha he menu get. The kedushin still can take effect, and a get is required. And the Gemara continues, Amar of Yosef, Rav Yosef says, My time of the Rebbe. What's the reason of Rebbe that he makes a distinction between the person's intention? It's just like a case, let's say a person is working the property of a ger. Now the property of a ger who dies is ownerless. He has no one to inherit it. So it's hefker. But when he's, when he's working the field and making chazaka, he's not doing it for the sake of a kenyan. He actually thinks it's his field. So he's doing a kenyan without the proper intention for a kenyan. So that's not a good kenyan. And it's the same thing over here as well. If he's going to go ahead and do it for the sake of Yibum, so it's like you're trying to make a Kenyan without the intention for the Kenyan, it's not going to be effective. So Amar Le Abaye, so Abaye said to Rav Yosef, what kind of comparison is that? Midami, is that comparable? Hasam lo kamechavin lemikni. In the case that you just said over there by the Nichse Hager, the guy had no intention of a Kenyan at all. But ha'ocha kamechavin lemikni. Here, he's having intention of being Kona the woman. He's just having a slightly off intention. Instead of saying he's doing it for Kedushin, he's doing it for Yibum. So you can't compare the two cases at all. And on the contrary, Abaya says, Halo damya elo, rather, if you're going to compare it to anything, it's comparable to the following case. Let's say somebody is working the property of a ger, uh, this particular ger, when he thinks it belongs to another ger. In other words, he's doing it for the sake of a Kenyan, but he doesn't realize who the ger was that died. And in that case, the Kani. In that case, it actually is a good Kenyan. So if you want to bring a proof from Nechsei HaGer, on the contrary, it shouldn't make any difference whether he thinks he's doing it for Yibum or Isha, it should always work. So we need Another explanation why it doesn't work when he does it with the intention of Yibam. El Omar Abaya, rather Abaya says, Hacha b'mayaskin. And here the case is as follows. Kegon Omar Lo, he says to her, Hiskad shili b'maymer yivamin. I'm going to do a kedushin, do a kedushin with me with maymer yivamin. And so therefore it works as follows. Rebbe Sava, Rebbe holds, Maimur Eloi Zeka Karami. He says that the Maimur is built on top of the Zeka, on top of the band. Vasoy Chalitza Afkata Lezeka. what happened was, when the person first did Chalitza, because that's the case over here, first he's doing Chalitza and then he's doing this Kiddushin. So when he took that, when he did that Chalitza, it undid the band. And therefore, since it undid the band, he's trying to put the Maimur, that's what it means, Hiskad Shaliba Maimur Yuvamin. He's trying to put the Maimur on top of the Zeka that doesn't exist. That's why it doesn't work.
and Rabbanon say, no, he says, they're, they're two independent things. The Maimer and the Zeik are independent. Therefore, just because the Zeik bond was undone, still, we say the Maimer could be effective. And the Rabbanon continue and argue, may Kara, let's say originally, if he would have used this language and said, let's do a Kiddushan with Maimer Yavamin, meaning before there was any Chalitza, Milo Mahani, wouldn't that be effective? So Hashdanami Mahani, so here also, it's going to be effective. The fact that there was Chalitza done is is irrelevant. And the Gemara continues, Rava Amar Rava says, Ido Amar la b'maimer yivamin, if he used this language, b'maimer yivamin, kuli amalo pligi d'mahani, actually everyone would agree that is effective. V'hacha b'maya skina, but here what's the case, the case is as follows. Kegon d'amar lo, he says to her, hiskad shili b'zekas yivamin, b'mikudesh is to me with the band of yibam. Rebbe Sava, Rebbe holds, and we'll continue with this discussion in the next video, on Daphnun Gimel Amad Aleph.